Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. Let's get started with our hosts, Linda McKissick and Dana Gentry. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Everything Life and Real Estate. I'm Linda McKissick. And I'm Dana Gentry. Hey, Dana. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing great. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. So um, we are going to talk about what makes winners? Yeah. So you picked this topic. So help me understand where'd you get, where'd you get the idea and why, okay. why are we talking about that today? Yes. Yeah, so I got the idea because I feel like lately I've had multiple examples and personally for me, and I've been talking to other people in business about this. And it's like, you get somebody and you think that they really are a winner or they're going to be a winner. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you have them in your life and then they, they don't possess the qualities that you thought that they did. And so I was actually listening to a, uh, or watching a YouTube video about, uh, on Ben Kinney. And he was talking about how he, about different winners in his life. And I thought, okay, maybe this will be something for us to just talk about and noodle on and really what mm -hmm. makes a winner and how do you, um, attract them and find them and, and, and what is it that really makes people who have, who have one consistently over and over and over, not like a one hit one wonder or winner, um, mm -hmm. but a consistent winner, you know? Mm -hmm. So can you give me an example of what kind of, what started to happen? What went from, I think I got a winner to, uh oh, I might not have a winner. <laughs> well, okay. So one, one of the things I was thinking about is just because somebody wins in one thing oh. doesn't mean that they're going to win in other things. Right. right. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know what you're talking about now. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. So true. So, so, so true. Yeah. So, like you, might be a, you know, you might win at, at something great in one aspect of your, your career, yeah. and mm -hmm. then you decide you want to squirrel and go do something else and you, you know, don't win in it. Um, mm -hmm. And is it, is it passion? Do you think it's because you only have, you're passionate about something and not about something else? Or is it that you got lucky or, you know, what, what is it? I don't know. <laughs> Wow, this is a great topic. Boy, I, I can think of specific places in my life where I've put those people into my life and I've been just just uh, disappointed because uh, I missed something. Yeah. You know? um, so, you know, remember how we talk about there's three types of talent, there's raw, there's emerging, and there's uh, proven? Proven, yep. Well, I think unless someone has specifically done a, and even if they've done a job, um, let's say, for example, a perfect example is even in our lives where you and I look for team leaders of our offices, yep. you know, just because even someone's been a successful team leader somewhere else, if you move them out of that environment and anything changes, that could change the dynamics of everything. You don't yep. know what pieces of something cause that person, The you know, it could be the combination. You know how sometimes on winning sports teams, they say, it's actually the coach and the player together. Yeah, or the team of players. Or the other team of players with them. Yeah. So you change any dynamic and you run, now you're into a risk of, of it might not, they might not succeed at the same level that they yeah. have before. I mean, I think you've got to go off as many clues as you possibly can. <clears throat> well, and you know, we talked about this before and I think, okay, humble, hungry, smart. Like those are all the things I think make a great winner. I always mm -hmm. look for those. Somebody who always puts the people first, cares about people more than they care about themselves. I think about the achiever story that you've told about the new email and Gary about, you know, and yes, I think about that. And, and then I still think what's missing maybe, you know, are the, are you, it's like, you think you have all these qualities in, in a winner um, or even if somebody's listening and they're like, man, I really want to be a winner. What do I need to do? Yeah. You know, but it's like, do, do you miss it or, or what? I don't know. Well, you know, one thing too, that I've started trying to find deeper in people, Dana is a, a type of hungry mm -hmm. or chip on their shoulder, because mm -hmm. those two things will sometimes drive someone, uh, even better or bigger than, than other things. Meaning like if there's something that they just, they have to prove. Yeah. Let's say, let's say you've got somebody and they need to prove to a parent that they are actually going to win in life. You know, I've watched that or someone scorned them and, or told them that, you know, they could, that, that well, per example is when my, when I left my company, rather than be the 
friend and people I thought they were because yeah. I had poured my soul into them. I had taught for free, trying to help them grow their company and do different things. Instead of saying, hey, like one of my people that I left years ago, one of I left her company, she's like, Linda, anything I can ever do to help you? Yeah. You know, I wish you the best. You're always going to be successful. I mean, I remember that lady very fondly. But yeah. the next person, the next company I leave, they're like, you're never going to make it. You know, you're only making it because you're with us. And I'm like, seriously, that gave me a chip. Oh, yeah. I was not going to go fail. Yeah. And I was never going back through those doors. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think that I look for that sometimes. Um, also, you know, Gary says that every five to seven years, people look up and say, where's mine? Mm hmm. I haven't had really good luck with people who really probably already have a certain level of success mm -hmm. and, and aren't still hungry for more. Yeah. Does that makes sense. Yep. Um, like, yep. you know, like maybe, maybe I would go and I would find it. I'd look for a couple of markers like achiever. Mm -hmm. because a person who's achiever they don't get to a certain dollar amount and say okay I'm done you know yeah. or you know if I make it fine if I don't fine yeah if, if you've got achiever in you there's just something inside of you that you're driven to achieve yeah. right so I do think uh, that's one of the big big uh quantifiers of a winner is their financial thermostat for yeah. sure because I mean and doesn't mean that they're not a good person or any of that stuff, but I've worked with people before who their financial thermostat has been like, once I get to this, then I'm good. I'm done. And yeah. my brain has never worked like that. And I know yours isn't either. Yeah, so, so you think, and, and, and that's a good point, Dana, when we're bringing people into our lives, mm -hmm. uh, you think everyone's like you. Mm -hmm. And one of my biggest problems over the years is yeah. I, um, I think, well, I'm hungry, so they must be hungry. I, I'm an achiever, so they must be an achiever. I have high responsibility, so they must have high responsibility. No, go check for those things. Yeah. Where are the clues that they have those things? Um, you know, um, I, yeah, I, this is such a big deal because I think this causes a lot of realtors to give up on building their teams or trying to find somebody to replace them in the business. But I still think that the minute we hear someone is successful somewhere else, we maybe start to skip clues. Yeah. You know what I mean, maybe we miss some things uh, that, that we should still be looking for. Yeah. Like red flags. Um, I can always look back and see where, <laughs> where like I missed a step <laughs> or yeah. something a hundred percent. Um, and it's, you know, it's, it, it, it's hard because you want, and sometimes I think you want to think that someone is going to really be a winner. <laughs> well, yeah, of course you do. <laughs> um, and, you know, I think attitude about what they're doing is important. And if yeah. they see themselves as doing a role that is lesser than them, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, yep. you know, you kind of have to maybe redirect them and, and say, we need to rethink how we're looking at that because yeah. you know, their attitude about the job or the role that they're doing is super important. And if they see it as beneath them or, you know, just a stepping stone to check be some box. Yeah. Check off the box. You know, I had actually had a conversation about that last week with someone. And I said, the thing is that if you feel that way, I can guarantee you that the people that you're leading pick up on that. Yeah. And yeah. they're going to, and they're, they're going to feel it a hundred percent. There's no way that they can't or that they won't. Um, mm -hmm. even if you don't think that there that's that they, they will, people are smarter than you give them credit for it and they'll pick up on it big time. Yeah, absolutely. So I think, so their attitude around what they're doing, they're no victim, you know, yeah. kind of attitude, you know, they're, they're, uh, they're growing, they're humble, hungry, and smart, which is my favorite one. Yeah. Um, you know, and you, I bet if you go back and look, one of these are missing and it may be that the hungry has been satisfied. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Winners, I think, are not jealous of other people. Oh, that's a really good one. You know, I think they don't expect to be given things. They know they must earn it. 
Yeah. They don't have any entitlement. And then I think there's just certain things. I think the other place we miss is their personal lives. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes their personal lives, you know, it's autobiographical. Yeah. So we missed a clue or we don't investigate that piece of it enough to see any red flags or clues that might come up. Um, um, I'm, I, I, I don't know who originally we heard this from, but anybody that I have hired over the last several years, I always go to dinner with their spouse or their partner or somebody. And I can, and I can look at the ones that I have not done that with. And it, and it was a mistake mm -hmm. every mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So I think, you know, it, you know, we're always going to, we're always going to find a place that we could have gone back and we either didn't, we rushed through it. We didn't listen to a little knocking on our conscious that said, Oh, maybe I should investigate this more, or this is a piece that bothers me, but I'm going to ignore it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? That's a big one. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, how do I know they're humble? How do I know they're hungry? How do I know they're smart? Yeah. And until we get all of this answered, I think we don't pull the trigger on bringing them into our lives or hiring yep. them or, or whatever. Yep. I totally, totally agree with that. And Can I think you... growing, I think if they're not growing mm -hmm. personally to try to figure out how do they get better, I've also not had good luck with people that kind of already think they've arrived. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I don't know. I kind of don't do good with that in general anyway, just because usually I think that there's an attitude piece to that. But yeah, I don't know. Like I remember one time Gary saying when we were at a, um, at a mastermind in Austin, he said there's two types of people that we've talked about this before. There's one that wakes up every single day and wants to keep achieving over and over. And there's another that wakes up every day and wants to protect what they have and they're good with what they have. I mean, I don't necessarily think that, and he said, you know, obviously one's not better than the other or good or bad or anything, but I do think that the, the ones that wake up every day and want to achieve more are probably the ones that kind of have more of that. I'm going to go win and have a winning mindset. And a lot of times if they're not into the growing aspect or part of things, um, then it's, it's, it, it shows up and it's hard to see that. Um, and I think going back to the personal life, I think too, you have to really dig in deeper to their personal lives because they may have somebody on the other side at home that's saying, you know, we don't, I don't want you to grow or do anything else or, or any of those things. And, and that, and, you know, I hate that because that really is like an internal struggle. Mm -hmm. Or the, the other person on the other side might be saying, well, I don't really want I don't want you to take this opportunity because it's going to cost me this, this, or this. Yep. No. And back to what the point, and that kind of fits what, what I've always learned said about there's two kinds of entrepreneurs. The one who says, Hey, that was great. Now that becomes my floor. What's my next ceiling. Yep. And then the other one says, wow, I'm making more than I ever thought I'd make. And they do, like you said, Gary said, protect it. I think that where it's important is for you to understand who do you need in the role you have? Yeah. Um, because, um, if I, I, you know, I need a multiplier or someone to grow something, I don't want the one that's just protecting what they have because yeah. they're not trying to achieve more. And the way our model works is they got to want more because when they get more, we get more. Yeah. And so you can't expect to put that person in that spot and then want to accomplish the same thing you want to accomplish. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I remember years ago, there was the, in one of the classes, there was talent, non-talent. And mm -hmm. what it means is talent for a particular role or non-talent for a particular role doesn't mean a judgment on a person. But I remember one of the leaders uh, in our region at the time, he kept that posted behind the seat of the person sitting there. And, you know, one of the things it says is talent pushes you. Yep. They don't, they don't, uh, you know, they don't wait for you to push them. They push you. Yep. Uh, and, um, so he had that sheet big blown up behind the person and he had it put behind where their chair was. And I know what he was doing is he was listening for clues yeah. for all of those talent versus non-talent. And we'll have to find that somewhere. You know what I'm talking about, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. We, I have it somewhere on my computer. I will, we'll, we'll send that. We'll link that. Um, yeah. cause that, that is a good idea. That just re brought back up to me. a thought, <laughs> Yeah. 
you know, because I think there's clues, but we're just choosing to ignore those clues. Yep. Um, and so, and I'm talking to myself more than I'm talking to you, honestly, I'm talking to myself because well, this, this is what I tend to do sometimes. Yeah, it's the same. I, you know, I thought I have that. I think I have that talent, non-talent on my computer somewhere. I'm trying to look for it really quick, but that is such a, that's a really great thing to, to think about and to pull up. I, I would have never have thought, yep, I have it here. So um, and maybe we'll add to that list, humble, hungry, and smart, and put that behind wherever a person's going to sit or somewhere that like, let's say you're on Zoom talking to somebody, put that somewhere where you can see it and you're saying, how do I know they're humble? How do yeah. I know they're hungry? How do I know they're smart? Yeah, there's the set the seven signs of talent. So non-talent brings you problems, talent finds solution. Non-talent doesn't fulfill your needs and ends up giving you back the job or pieces of the job where talent shares your goals and fulfills your needs uh, as a natural byproduct of filling their own. Non-talent doesn't know what they want and isn't searching. Talent knows what they want and is actively searching. Uh, Non-talent requires pushing, talent pushes you. Non-talent may not know where the existing bar is set or even what bar you're talking about. Talent is continually raising the bar. Non-talent doesn't care who they spend time with and actually repels talent from them where talent demands to be associated with talent and attracts talent to them. And then lastly, non-talent, when they try to talk action and results, they can't back it up where talent talks the language of action and results all the time. Mm -hmm. And you know, something that happened by accident years ago, and I think I, I was thinking of this as you and I are talking we should probably add this to our list is uh, Nikki and I went to dinner. Nikki's my business partner and we went to dinner and she was thinking about hiring this person and all throughout the dinner, we could not stand talking to him. Mm. He kept telling the same stories over and over. He was boring as heck. And Nikki and I just wanted to talk to each other. <laughs> and, and so the dinner ended the next morning. She said, what do you think? And I said, well, I, here's what I think. I think you and I, we're mega agents. If, if he can't hold our attention, how is he going to go out and get mega oh, agents great point. to join, your con join you? And Nikki, you and I could not stand talking to him for 10 minutes. We just ignored the heck out of him and talked to each other because he's boring. He tells the same stories over and over and oh my God, it was just awful. And so I think that's a test we need to add because um, mm -hmm. I wanted to shoot myself when I've talked to certain people. <laughs> it's <And> so true. <laughs> so true. Whew. So I think that would be a good one is bring some, you know, and we kind of do these things like you have, what's the, what's the part of the career visioning where you actually bring a group in? Yeah. The group interview. Yeah. But I think it needs to be a place where the person's guard is down. Yeah. Yeah. Not where they're interviewing for something. So you pick someone like the person they would have to try. Let's in our case, cause we, we all, you and I always bring in people that are trying to recruit. So let's yep. use that as an example. Yep. So what I, what we need to do is if we're going to bring in somebody that's going to recruit, we need to go get someone like the person they would have to recruit, Yeah, bring them in and then think. see who, if they enjoy, if they're, if they're engaged, if they're enthralled, if they're excited, if they say, yeah. man, that, that's the coolest person I love. Thank you for inviting me to dinner with them. Yeah. Or if they go, oh my God, shoot me. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, that's very true. Actually, I, I I have a group interview coming up in two, in a week and a half, and that actually is that just gave me an idea. Instead of just the normal people that would be in the room, I, I'm I'm going to go get some a bigger players to have there. Yeah, and you know, also you and I, I can't remember the guy, but it, John Maxwell, he talked about going early to the restaurant. It's kind of that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's but I like I like more specific tests. Yeah. In other words, to me, if that person in this particular case, we were hiring somebody that was a team leader and they had to go recruit top agents. I want to see how top agents re respond to them before I start paying them a paycheck. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. You know, yeah. I like the fact that we can even get a little more specific um, yep. with, with some of that stuff, because I think in an interview setting, they're on their best guard. I want to mm -hmm. go somewhere where they let their guard down a little bit and I get to see them in the raw, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I just think, I think winners are fun to be around. Mm -hmm. One of, they, they have a charisma and an it factor that you want 
to plug into. And if you don't want to plug into it, who, why the heck do you think anybody else would want to? You know, I don't remember when it was. It must have been a couple of weeks ago. I don't know. Oh, I guess it was when Jimmy was on our, our call for the region. And Jimmy said, if I dread getting on the phone and talking to them every week, then I have, then I know I have an issue Then I know that they're not the right person. And as soon as he said that, I was like, oh my gosh, I can think of in the past when that's happened to me, even people that I'm not in business with now, but I would dread every, like just, yeah. it would drain my energy so bad. And I should have known then, like, this is not the right person, but I did I never heard, I didn't have Jimmy to tell me that before. <laughs> Yeah, but how do we get there? How do we get to that place before we hire them? Exactly. You gotta go in and let them go. That's and right. That's, not fun. that's that sucks. Yeah. And I can think back on those times and I, how many months I wasted, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that that is a great point that winners are fun to be around for sure. A hundred percent. Because when you when your energy is up, you can win quicker and more and better than if your energy is constantly down. Yeah. And do they give you energy or do they drain your energy? Yeah. Yeah. And well, you know, what else do they attract? Because winners attract other winners. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's painful. I know. Trust me. <laughs> That's why my last hire took, I don't know how many months, four or five, six months, because I, I, I was so afraid of making a mistake. Uh, and here's the thing. I still, I, I don't think I've made a mistake, but yeah. I could. Yeah. Something could showing up yeah. and, and I don't know, you know what I mean? There's sometimes there's things you just don't, that happen in their lives that, you know, that are going to keep them from winning yeah. at a role. I hope that doesn't happen, but it could, you yeah. know, but what I have to be ready to do is change it as quick as possible. Yeah, absolutely. You know? <clears throat> and, uh, and I think the other thing is, you know, giving clear expectations and more direct questions. Yeah. This is Thing that I watched Jimmy do we should have Jimmy on our podcast and let him talk about how he holds someone accountable it's so yeah, good we, we definitely should because I'm telling you from when Jimmy talked to all of our OPs I mean we had the best feedback it was yeah. really good yeah it's really good and I'm watching him do it on a regular basis now that he's an OP again and um and it's fun to watch so I think you know learning to ask more direct questions and yeah. And not in a mean way, but in a, this is, he's very convicted. This is the best thing I can do for that person. Well, you know? and he builds the relationship first and then, it, and then he, he has permission to ask those hard questions. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think that that makes a huge difference. I mean, almost sometimes I'm listening to him and his questions make me uncomfortable and I'm on the other side of the phone. I'm not even <laughs> the person. I'm like, oh my gosh. That's what Adam <laughs> does too. I know I always he like say, you know be sure this is the right thing for you and I'm like Ooh. yeah yeah <laughs> you know so but anyway I love it because I really feel like it's the best thing for the other person to make them really think deep and hard yeah and it you know I remember one time years ago Gary Keller said something to me you could cause that person to wake up and get their butts in gear and win yeah and so you have to look at it like that and years ago I remember I was trying to hire this talent I don't know if it's one of my 50 million team leaders I was trying to hire or what, but Gary looked at me and said, Linda, don't you think if you could, you would have by now. And I want you to know that put a fire under me. And then I got that great hire. And then wow. I once hired that caliber. I knew exactly what they felt like. And I kept, you know, I, I could do it again. It's, yeah. it's when you never really hired somebody super talented. Yeah. It's hard to get your arms around what we're talking about here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the minute you ever do it, you'll know what it looks and feels like, and it'll be easier to do it again. But just him saying that to me, oh my God, it's like, he must know what it takes to fire up a high D because that fired me up and I've never looked back. And it's been the best thing he could ever do for me because so said, I don't you think if you could have done it, you would have done it by now. Linda, don't you think if you could have hired the right team leader by now, you would have <laughs> I'm like, oh God, that, that kills me. <laughs> uh, but, but guess what? I got my butt in gear and I, yeah. and I, I learned what, what it really, what that really meant to hire the, the right kind of team leader. God, that's a, that's a good question too. Really good question. Well, we can so, speak. So being with a winner and maybe they're just not winning. Sometimes some of the great questions and things yeah. that you ask them could, especially if you've got clues that they are a winner, 
um, you know, being willing to, yeah. Um, to say, I'm, I'm curious, why would you say that? Why would you, why would you think that? Yeah. And then examples of why their thinking is not serving them well. And yep. it's not accurate because sometimes their thinking isn't right. Yeah, my our well, our coach Terry, my coach Terry gave me a great. She actually had me make a list of questions, and she said, "Let's go through and make. I'll help you with some. You come up with some. Let's go back and make a like a firm, solid list of really great questions that you can just constantly ask over and over again until either they it clicks on one side or or the other. Um, and they have, and that has that has helped in several different situations that I have right now, actually. Uh, because it's that whole thing about getting someone to self-discover over, you know, making them do something. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, any last thoughts or questions around winners? You know, I think winners can mean anybody who, you know, wants to win at anything could be life. It could be relationships. It could be money. It could be job. It could be anything. Um, you know, and I, I hate, to think like winners and losers. And I just think it's more about who wants to succeed at a high level. Definitely. And and if you're putting them in a role, who would be the winner for that role? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I think that's spot on that. That was one of the biggest, biggest things I wrote down was who do you need for what you have? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Any final thoughts about winners that we want to share before we wrap up the day? No, I think this has been great though. I mean, I, I always go, you know, it's like I started with, I always go back to the humble, hungry, smart. And then, and then I'm like, okay, there's gotta be more, there's gotta be some more <laughs> Yeah. Uh, on top of that. So, yeah. Well, what, what I find is interesting is when I, when I start to feel that feeling I have, when I put somebody in a role and I start to feel like they're not going to fulfill it at the highest level, I start to go back and look for things that I missed yeah. Cause like you, it's easier to see looking backwards uh, and then just go ahead and add into your next career visioning process. How do I double check for this? Or, yeah. you know, you know what, how did I miss this? Yeah. Love it. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, Dana, um, this has been a great conversation as usual. And remember yeah. if you have a, a comment, a question, a thought, uh, a challenge or an opportunity that you'd like for Dana and I to discuss on the podcast, reach out to us at everything. Nope at info at everything life in real estate. And then also, uh, if you haven't hit subscribe, if you just stumbled across our podcast, be sure and hit the subscribe button. And the greatest compliment you can give Dana and myself is to pass this podcast along to someone else who you feel like might benefit from our conversations. So Dana, have an amazing day and I'll talk to you next week. You too. I'll see you then. Be sure to subscribe for more business strategies and tactics to inspire you to live an abundant real estate life. Don't forget to rate and review so we can bring you the best content. Find this and other valuable information at everythinglifeandrealestate.com.